It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? And now, here's our story. <laughs> Nature gives great bounties to Paradise Valley, but her moods are not always kindly. Sometimes in late winter, she spikes with ice and snow and gusty driving winds. Then is a good time to be indoors. This is a tough one, Roy. Telephone lines are down all over the valley. We're lucky we still got lights. I know, Sheriff. I just hope none of those little communities up in the mountains run out of food. It's drifting badly up about a thousand feet, and the roads won't be passable for weeks. You and Pat really needn't have come in tonight, Roy. We haven't had enough business to keep the proprietor going, let alone a waiter. Why, shucks, we got the stock all taken care of, and I wanted to show Roy that no little old sleet storm like this could stop no bell. Oh, she got us here all right, Pat, and I guess Trigger and Bullet are just as happy in the stables. Yes, but are you sure you can get back? The sleet's changing to snow. That blizzard from the mountains likely to hit down here before midnight. Of course, if you fellows get stuck, I can always accommodate you down at the jail. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily lock the cell, you know. Well, if you did, me and Roy wouldn't even be bothered. Uh, if we should have to accept the sheriff's offer, Roy, remind me to take along a can opener. I'm glad this place is open. I'm nearly frozen to death. Oh, you poor man. You just sit down. We'll start you out with some hot soup. Yeah. Let me help you get your macadon and your mittens off, stranger. Now, this is a miserable night to be out. Hey, mister, you better get your horse to shelter. There's a shed right behind the restaurant. Uh, I haven't got a horse. Came down on foot. Rather, on snowshoes. On snowshoes? From where? Oh, from the ledge. Oh, the ledge? ledge? Why, that's 20 miles from here. Yeah, 20 miles and darn near straight up. Uh, maybe you slid down. Uh, never mind the jokes, fella. I came down to save a man's life, but I guess it's too late now. Oh, hey, I- I'm sorry, mister. Here, try this soup. I haven't got a red cent. Well, that's perfectly all right. You just order anything in the house and forget about the check. Say, what's this about being too late to save a man's life? Uh, maybe there's something we can do. Well, if anyone is around the ledge without shelter, it is too late. However... My name's Bart Bradshaw, a trapper. My partner and I set our lines in the ledge country this winter. Bart Bradshaw. Say, didn't you team up with Craigie Stevens? Yeah. Yeah, Craigie's my partner. At least the poor fellow was my partner. Hey, Craigie's one of the finest fellows that ever set foot in Paradise Valley. What's happened to him? Well, a blizzard broke and Craigie was gone from the cabin, and finally I went out looking for him. Oh, and that storm must really have been raging up there. It was, ma'am. I, I finally found Craggy. He was caught in a bear trap. Oh, hey, them are mean things. I know. There wasn't much I could do. I I was icy numb. My mittens were frozen in my hands. I, I managed to drag Craggy back to the cabin, and then I set out for help. What? You left him in the cabin with a bear trap on his leg? I was near crazy from the cold. Figured I could maybe get down to civilization faster than I could thaw myself out enough to help Craggy. Bradshaw, you should have headed for the county seat. It's ten miles closer to where you are. Well, I started for there. Then I lost my way in the blizzard. And then I remembered Craggy saying that if anything ever happened to him, I should let a fellow named Roy Rogers know. He lives around Mineral City somewhere, doesn't he? And Mr. Bradshaw, I'm Roy Rogers, and I'm mighty glad you stumbled in here. Pat, you and I have got to start the ledge right away. We've got to do something for Craggy. Oh, oh, no, 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 Rogers, it's, it's too late. 
Oh, he was alive when you left, wasn't he? Oh, yes, but... Uh, then Pat and I are going. Roy, no, not in this blizzard. The roads aren't open, Roy. If you did start out on snowshoes and by some freak of luck you happened to make it, how would you get Craggy down? He weighs better than 200 pounds. Look, Roy and me know this country pretty well, and we ain't afraid of no little old blizzard. Of course, it's... <laughs> I never thought about getting him down. We'll get him down all right. We've got skis and poles at the ranch. We can fix up some sort of a sled in half an hour. And don't forget, we've got Bullet. Who's Bullet? He's Roy's big dog. And if any dog can handle a load like that, he can. Come on, Pat. Nellie Bella's got to get us back to the ranch now. And in a hurry. Well, don't try it, Rogers. It'll take you a day to find your way up there, and that will be too late. There's no reason for one life to cost two more. Oh, nonsense. It's maybe 12 or 13 miles from the ranch. We've got compasses, and we know where we're heading. Well, we ought to reach Craigie shortly after daybreak. Hey, I'm with you, Roy. I'm all bundled up. And so am I. Nellie Bell just better start. Oh, she will. So long, everybody. Oh, Roy and Pat, be careful. Good luck, fellas. Don't try it, man. Don't try it. We've got to, Bradshaw. You did the best you could for Craigie, and we'll do the best we can. There are a couple of first-class fellas. But they haven't got a chance of making it, have they? Well, of course they have. Listen, I've never seen Roy and Pat miss on anything they've really set their minds to do. If they find Craggy Stevens alive, I'll bet they have him in the county seat hospital by noon tomorrow. The hospital? Maybe that's where I should go. I'm frostbitten, I'm half crazy from worry. If I can borrow a horse somewhere, maybe I'd better start out for the county seat right now. Well, that's ridiculous. If you feel that badly, you're in no condition to travel through this storm anymore. I should say not. You just come down to the jail with me, and I'll make you comfortable for the night. We'll see how you are in the morning, and you don't have to worry. I won't lock the cell. You all right up there, Roy? Yeah, come on, on, but at least I know where I'm going. Is Bullet handling the sled all right? <laughs> Sure we are. I'll keep on breaking trail for a while, Pat. Keep your flare high and watch your step. Right, Roy. I guess nothing can happen to it. Or can it? Hey, stop a minute, Roy. It's my turn to break trail. Okay, Pat. The wind really bites up there. You all right, bullet boy? Boy, Roy, I've been colder, but I don't remember when. Well, it goes for me too, Pat, but we've covered a good eight miles. Say, here's the compass. Keep us going as close to 30 degrees north by northeast as you can. And be careful, it's slippery going along there. Okay, here I go. Well, it'll start as soon as he feels the slack go out of my rope, and you start when you feel your rope go taut. Good boy, Pat. We'll make a mile or so this way and then change off again. Here we go, Roy. Well, this ain't the slipper going. Here, the first time I've ever walked a tightrope on snowshoes, but... Hey, Roy, I'm over the ledge. Well, get hold of anything you can find and hang on to that compass. Bullet and I can pull you up. Back, Bullet. Back, boy. I'm coming, Roy. I'm getting there. Oh. Oh, there. I got hold of the ledge. You hurt, Pat? No. But I'm sure glad you thought of these ropes. Boy, look at my flare. It dropped in that chasm 500 feet deep. Where you're going, Roy? I guess so, Pat, unless this compass needle's frozen. We're getting close to the ledge country now. Roy, did you hear that? Yeah, I sure did. Yeah, and Bullet did, too. Man, that wind is really howling. That isn't the wind, Pat. Those are wolves. Wolves? Oh, Jiminy Willikers. Hey, I hope they don't come no closer, boy. My hands are just plumb too cold to shoot. They won't bother us, Pat, as long as we stay on our feet. And we'll be reaching Craigie's cabin soon. Look, you can see daybreak on the other side of the peaks. Boy, it can't come too soon to suit me. Roy, it just can't come too soon to suit me. We'll be back with Roy in two shakes. But first, 
Right off the front of that post sugar crisp package, here are those three famous honey bears, handy dandy and candy. What's on your mind, fellas? Post sugar crisp! You're always thinking about the cereal treat that's fun to eat. And no wonder, because it's tempting puffed wheat deliciously candy coated with sugar and honey. But tell the folks how Sugar Crisp makes wonderful eating three different ways. As a cereal, it's dandy. Sugar Crisp is just sweet enough. You don't need sugar. Correct. Just pour on milk or cream. Have a feast for breakfast. For snacks, it's so handy. Sugar Crisp is always ready. Good any time. The best ever. A nourishing treat whenever you're hungry. And Sugar Crisp is swell right out of the box. Just like candy. Right again. Sugar Crisp is wonderful anyway. Gives that quick food energy you need. So remember what the three Sugar Crisp bears tell you. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Look for genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on front. Buy Sugar Crisp tomorrow. Raging blizzard drives down out of the mountains into Paradise Valley, and out of the biting snowflakes, a bearded stranger brings word that a trapper friend of Roy's has met with a serious accident high in a desolate country called the Ledge. Roy, Pat, and Bullet set out on the icy night to try to bring Craggy Stevens to civilization before it's too late. It is early the next morning in the Eureka Cafe. Good morning, Dale. Say, you're open early. Yes, I stayed in the little apartment upstairs last night. I didn't want to ride buttermilk through that blizzard. Well, I don't blame you. My Uncle Fred had a saying, "Tain't a fit night out for man or beast. Yeah. And that certainly was what you might call applicable last night. Hey, coffee ready yet? Yes, I've been up a couple of hours. I didn't sleep very well. Worried about Roy, huh? About Roy and Pat and Bullock, too. I know they'll be all right, but... Even just thinking about setting out in that storm last night. How soon do you think we'll hear from them, Sheriff? I don't know. There ain't a telephone line open anywhere in the valley. And, of course, making the best possible time, they they couldn't get that Stevens fella down to the county seat before noon. How about Mr. Bradshaw? Did you get him settled comfortably? Sure, he slept on the couch in my office. But I checked in about a half hour ago, and the night deputy said Bradshaw woke up and left at daybreak. You know, I couldn't figure out that Bradshaw. It seemed to upset him terribly when Roy and Pat started out for his partner. Yeah. Well, I guess he was just completely unnerved by what he went through. Hey, look at that guy riding down the street. He must have important business to be up this early and out in that weather. That pinto looks vaguely familiar, but the right... <gasps> Sheriff, wait, that rider is Bradshaw. Huh? Oh, huh? It certainly is. The beard, the mackinaw, and those red mittens. Of course it's Bradshaw. You're right. I didn't get a look at his face, but you can spot them mittens even from here. But but he didn't have a horse. I think the horse belongs to old Mr. Fallon. Do you suppose Bradshaw could have got up early and walked clear out to Fallon's and bought himself that pinto? Well, he couldn't very well buy it. He said last night he didn't have a cent. Then, by golly, he must have stolen Do you remember last night how all of a sudden Bradshaw was terribly anxious to get to the county seat? Listen, something isn't just right here. I'll saddle up buttermilk while you get your horse ready, and we'll head for that county seat ourselves. Well, Dale, it's terrible weather, but of course I couldn't let a horse thief get away no matter if I was sheriff of the North Pole. All right, let's get going. Somehow I think Bradshaw might be even worse than a horse thief. <laughs> Well, there it is, Pat. That must be the cabin Craigie and Bradshaw were using. I just hope we got here in time. I sure do, too, Pat. Well, there's a chance. That's a mighty snug little cabin, and look at the way it's set among those big trees. It was mighty well protected from the blizzard. Well, gosh, yes. Once you get in the shelter here, you can even make out some snowshoe prints. Look, there's a faint set of tracks leading up to the big tree. It looks like a man <laughs> fell and was dragged the rest of the way. That's what it looks like. Uh, let's get inside, Pat. I'll take the horns off a bullet and carry this first aid stuff. You pick up some of those big sticks for firewood. Yeah, right you are, Roy. Hey, their wood pile is right over there. These logs must have got scattered from it. Here, Bullet. You're all set, boy. Come on inside with us. We'll warm up. Craggy? 
Craggy, it's Roy Rogers. Hey, there he is, Roy, lying on the bunk. Good. We are in time. Now, Craggy, we'll get you out of here. Say, Pat, loosen his mackinaw while I work on this bear trap. You bet. Hey, that's a rough old-looking trap. It certainly is. Snapped him right below the knee. Hey, you're going to be all right now, Craggy. We'll get this darn hood off your head and loosen things up. Hey, Roy, he's got a real mean bump on his noggin. He's got a real mean gash in his leg, too, but I don't think any bones are broken. What'd you say, Pat? His head, it's really bruised. I guess maybe he fell against a rock, but it looked almost like he was conked with a club or something. Bart, is that you? No, Craggy. It's Roy Rogers and Pat Brady. Roy and Pat, how did you... Uh, Bear traps off your leg, and we'll have you down at the hospital in a few hours. How did it happen, Craggy? Bear trap? I, I don't remember the bear trap. I don't remember anything except the blizzard and... I was almost home, and then everything went black. Now, take it easy, Craggy. You can talk later. I'll get the fire going here, Pat, and get the bandages out. I'm practically ahead of you, Roy. Uh, I'll be all right, won't I, Roy? Of course you will. I'm glad, because Bart and I are going to be rich. Sure, sure. You must have had a real good trapping season. Now, you just take it easy, Craggy. Hey, this kindling's nice and dry. Now, a couple of those big sticks for the fire, Pat. Catch. Got them. Where's Bart? He ought to go into town and stake a claim. Stake a claim? On what? There's nothing around this country but fur. Between you and me, it's a fur piece to go to get it, too. It is more than fur. We've got a whole mountain of carnitite rock. Part of which rock? Uh, oh, gosh, he's passed out again, Roy. Well, just as well, he wasn't making sense. He certainly was, Pat. Carnotite rock is the richest source of uranium ore. Uranium or what? Uranium? You bet. And here's something else that makes sense. Pretty rotten sense. Pat, when that Bradshaw fella came in last night, he was wearing bright red mittens, wasn't he? He sure was. Claimed they were practically frozen on his hands. And you picked up this heavy stick of wood right behind the tree where the print of the body started, didn't you? Yeah, I guess so. Why? There are red woolen threads on it. It all ties together now. A bruise on Craggy's head and everything. Roy, you mean Craggy's partner knocked him over the head, clamped that bear trap on his leg, and then left him here to die? I think that's exactly what happened, Pat. And I don't think it took him half as long to come to Mineral City as he said. We're heading down the other side of the slope to the county seat. We've got to get there before Bradshaw can stake a claim on this land. We'll catch up with Roy in a moment. Meanwhile, listen to Handy Dandy and Candy, the three Sugar Crisp Bears. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. More appetizing words were never heard. Sugar Crisp is a honey of a new cereal with a truly different kind of taste. Sugar Crisp is made of nourishing puffed wheat with a delicious, energy-rich sugar and honey coating. As a cereal, you just add milk or cream. It's already sweetened. And tween meals, you'll find Sugar Crisp the handiest, best-tasting snack ever. Or eat it like candy right out of the box. Tomorrow, get the genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on it. Lean into those traces, bullet boy. That's it. Craggy, you all right? Don't worry about me, Pat. We're making much better time than we did coming up, Pat. But it's tough going for bullet when it's not downhill. Well, I ain't doing much good running along back here and helping you push once in a while. You can handle the rear of the sledge all right by yourself, can't you, Roy? Sure I can, Pat. All right, then. Help me rig these ropes so as I can get up in front and help bullet pull. Pat Brady, you're a great guy. Ah, go on. I'm just in good company. Golly, if we only could have figured some way to get Nellie Bell up here. Boy, she could have got us down a whole lot faster. And meanwhile, in the county courthouse, as the hands of the clock push toward noon... Yeah, here we are, Bradshaw. I think this is the book of maps we want. Yeah, yeah, let me see it. Now, now, hold your horses. Hold your horses. I ain't busy. You got all day to file this claim. Yes, of course, but... Oh, here, here we are. 
This is the right map. Let's see now. That's the ledge territory, all right. Now, if we can figure out just what section you're talking about... Uh... All right, Bradshaw, we caught up with you. Sure, what... Yes, you bet we did. What are you doing in here? Well, it's none of your business, lady. Or yours either, Sheriff. My business is upholding the law, and you're under arrest. Where? Well, what is all this? Under arrest? Maybe you wouldn't mind telling me what for. You bet I wouldn't. You're a horse thief. Oh, no, just a minute. We happen to recognize that Pinto you were riding. He belongs to Jim Fallon in Mineral City. He did belong to Fallon, but I bought him this morning. I suppose you got a bill of sale to prove it. You bet I have. Here it is. Well, I'll be... Wait a minute. How did you happen to have the money to buy a fairly expensive horse when last night you said you couldn't even afford to pay for a meal? I was upset last night. Upset, cold, and tired. I'm sorry. I'll be glad to pay for what I ate in your place. And now, if you don't mind, I'll get on with my business. Now, the claim line will extend this way, clerk. Let me see now. Oh, darn these spectacles of mine. What kind of a claim are you filing? Uh, it's still none of your business, but... Well, it's a mineral rights claim. Say, I remember you now. I issued a trapping license to you and another fellow last fall. Whatever happened to him? Uh, Stevens is dead. Met with a terrible accident. Now, let's get this... A... He met with a terrible accident, all right, Bradshaw. But he isn't dead. Yeah, you bet he ain't. He's right here. Now, just lean on me, Craggy. You'll be all right. Craggy? No. Roy, Pat, you made it. I don't know how you did it, Roy, but you're here. Craggy, when I left you, you were... You... I don't know just what happened to me, Bart, but... I'm glad to see you're down here filing our claim. Yeah, yeah, of course, Craig, yeah. I'm filing our claim, all right. Oh, uh, is this to be a joint rights claim? I thought this was a single ownership, Mr. Bradshaw. Now, in that case, you will have to fill out a different form. Bradshaw isn't filling out any forms today, except maybe to sign the blotter to jail. Oh, no, you don't, Rogers. Your hands won't go near those guns, Bradshaw, because... I'm getting to your jaw oh, first. Yeah, now, wait. We can't have a brawl in the county office. I guess we'll have to, clerk, but it won't last very long. Hey, let me have a crack at him. Never Roy. mind, Pat. I'll handle it. Oh, Roy, don't. Don't. That's my partner. But he was your partner, Craig. Yeah. Yeah, he was your partner, but you can do better without half looking. Roy, what's this all about? We thought Bradshaw was a horse thief, and we followed him here, but he cleared himself on that count. Yeah, he was just filing a mineral rights claim. He was taking a claim to thousands and thousands of dollars worth of uranium ore. Uranium? Sure, him and Craggy found some Karna Witchum or other, something or other rocks, and, and this muzzler tried to do Craggy in and steal it all for himself. He had quite a plan worked out. But he didn't time it quite right, and he left too many clues behind. Roy, I guess I'm beginning to understand now. You know, when that Bradshaw fellow walked in last night, he didn't look quite right to me. I, I couldn't quite figure him out. Well, you're going to have plenty of time to figure him out now. <laughs> Looks like he'll be your guest for quite some time to come. Yes, only he won't be sleeping on your private couch. And he certainly won't be taking his meals in the Eureka Cafe. <laughs> Hey, we've got a friend outside. I've heard they feed those uh, Alaskan sled dogs on frozen fish, but I think Bullet earned himself a steak. And you know, <laughs> I could eat a little something myself. Well, just one thing before we close. This is Boy Scout Week. And on their 43rd birthday, I want to congratulate the Boy Scouts of America on the wonderful job they're doing for America. Throughout the land, 3,250,000 Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Explorers, and Scout Leaders are celebrating this birthday with the slogan, Forward on Liberty's Team. This is Roy Rogers saying goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Sugar Crisp. The cereal treat that's fun to eat. Fellows and girls, remember Roy's good advice and ask Mom to bring home Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. You'll love Post Sugar Crisp. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at the same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An art brush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Come and get it! Come and get it! For quick two-minute energy for work and play, how about Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? 
They are so good, good for you too. The two minute energy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about Great Nuts Flakes? Great Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrapped post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Look for Great Nuts Flakes, the great two minute energy cereal in the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Larry Thor, Charles Seal, and Tim Graham. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.